Peace be with you, my brother, my sister. I am back, your mommy E, your favorite grandma. And welcome back to my channel. This is another reaction due to your request, the face of Allah. Without further ado, let's check this out. shall see your Lord just as you see this full moon. You shall see your Lord. The comparison is to the people looking at the moon and the people looking at Allah. You will see your Lord just as you see this full moon. No one will be fighting. No one will be arguing to see it. Everyone will be able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The greatest blessing of Jannah is not Jannah. The greatest blessing of Jannah is not the things inside of Jannah. Rather, the greatest blessing of Jannah is something even more than Jannah itself. Allah says in the Quran, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا الْحُسْنَى وزيادة. Those who do good, they shall get Al-Husna, which is the name of Jannah. They shall get Al-Husna وزيادة and they will get more than Jannah. What could possibly be more than Jannah? Our Prophet ﷺ explained this verse. He made a tafsir of this verse. And he said, when the people of Jannah have entered Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask them, oh my servants, are you happy? The people of Jannah will say, yes, oh Allah, we are. Allah will say, oh my servants, is there anything more that you want? The people of Jannah will say, and what could we want more than this, O Allah? Have you not caused us to enter this paradise? What more could we want? Then the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will lift the veil, yakshiful hijab, and they will look at his face. And they will not be given anything better and more noble than the looking at his face. And this is the ziyada that the Quran talks about. This is what the Prophet said. Wahadihi ziyada. This is the thing that is more than Jannah. Allah says in the Quran, Wama tunfiquna illa ibtigha You're only spending your money to see the face of Allah. You're spending your money fi sabilillah to see the face of Allah. Allah says, You're being good to your relatives in order to see the face of Allah. Allah says, you're being patient. They're being patient in order to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Quran tells us that when we see the face of Allah, when we see the face of Allah, our faces will become bright and shining. We all know the verse. On that day, Faces will be shining bright. Now they're up. They're going to be shining bright. Why? Because they will be looking at their Lord. Ila Rabbiha Nadira. Ila Rabbiha Nadira. And this shows us that looking at the face of Allah is the greatest blessing given to us. And that face has been described as Dhul Jalali Wal Ikram. The face has been described as a face of Jalal. And Jalal means magnificence. Jalal means honor. Jalal means magnificence. And ikram means nobility. The face of Allah is a face of honor and a face of nobility. Why? Because anybody who sees that face has been honored beyond anyone else. Anyone who sees that face has been given an honor and a nobility that no one else will possess. And that face of Allah, we will not see it in this world. Musa asked to see. But Allah said, you don't have the power. You don't have the, the power, the capability. That is something only in the next life. And a famous hadith of Abu Dhar al-Ghifari. After Isra al-Mi'raj, when the Prophet ﷺ went up, and he went to a place higher than Jibreel. The Jibreel, Jibreel took him up, and Jibreel said, I cannot go anymore. Now you have to go on your own. I'm not allowed beyond this point. So the Prophet ﷺ went higher than any created being has ever been. 
Then he came back down. Abu Dhar al-Ghifari asked him, this hadith is in Sahih Muslim, very beautiful hadith, very interesting hadith. Ya Rasul Allah, hal ra'ayta rabbak? Beautiful hadith. O Messenger of Allah, did you see your Lord? Did you see your Lord? And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied, Noor anna ara. There was light everywhere. How could I see him? Noor anna ara. There was light everywhere. How could I see him? What light is he talking about? What is this light? Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained in another hadith. He clarified in another hadith. And this hadith is reported in Abu, by Abu Huraira in Sahih Muslim as well. And in it he said, Allah Azza wa Jal has taken a hijab. Hijabuhu nur Allah's hijab is nur Allah Azza wa Jal has taken a hijab. By hijab we mean a covering. Allah has taken a hijab. What is that hijab? You see for us the hijab, the hijab covers the beauty. It covers the beauty and it envelopes the beauty. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the hijab itself is beauty. And what is covered is beyond imagination. What it covers is beyond what the mind can comprehend. So our Prophet sallallahu said, Hijabuhu nur Allah's hijab is light. Law kashafahu, if he were to lift that hijab, la ahraqat subuhatu wajhihi mantaha ilayhi basaruhu min khalqihi. The rays of light that come from Allah's face would destroy everything that it sees. The beauty, the radiance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so powerful that the creation cannot bear to see it. So when the creation cannot bear to see it, out of mercy for the creation, Allah has veiled Himself from us in this dunya. And what is His veil? His veil itself is light. So when our Prophet went up all the way to Isra wal Mi'raj, he saw the veil of Allah. So when Abu Dhar asked him, what did you see? Did you see Allah? He said, Noor anna ara. There was the light. The face of Allah is a powerful video. There is a lot of hope when it says, Everyone will be able to see Allah. To see Allah is compared to a greater privilege than the going to or entering the paradise. I wondered about this question of Allah to those um, servants who are entering the paradise and asking them, are they happy? And asking them, is there anything more that you want? Because for me, entering the paradise is already perfection in itself. It's already perfection per se. In this video, it was said that God will leave his veil and the servants will be able to see and look at his face. And from then on, their faces would light, would glow. Then when we see the face of Allah, our faces will be bright and shining and glowing. And looking at the face of Allah is considered as the greatest blessing of them all. And anyone who sees the face of Allah has been given honor and nobility. Mention here that Moses asked to look at the face of Allah and it, he was not given the privilege. It was also mentioned that Allah uses the hijab of light as a covering and for him the light itself is beauty. But how much more the beauty inside that hijab, that light? It mentioned that Allah is using the hijab of light as an act of mercy for His creation because creation 
will not be able to stand the powerful radiance of the beauty that is covered by the hijab of light. So that is how the power and the beauty of the face of Allah. Now let us talk about the Bible, about the beliefs in Christianity. In John 4 verse 24, it says, God is his spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. A spirit is immaterial. It doesn't have any physical part. Therefore, you cannot see with your physical eyes the spirit, God. Now let us talk about the Old Testament, the history of the church. How did God let himself be manifested to his prophets, to his people? With Moses, we know that he manifested himself through the burning bush. Still with Moses and the Israelites, while they were still on their journey to the promised land, God manifested in a pillar of clouds at daytime and a pillar of fire at nighttime. So the Israelites were able to travel to another great prophet, Elijah. God manifested as a tiny whispering voice that is in 1 Kings chapter 19 verses 12 to like 18 in the New Testament, especially in the Gospel of John. John chapter 14 verse 9. Jesus said to Philip, have I been with you for so long a time? And you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Then in John chapter 12, verses 44 to 45, Jesus cried out and said, Whoever believes in me, believes not only in me, but also in the one who sent me. And whoever sees me, sees the one who sent me. Those are the words of Jesus. And Christians, we believe that Jesus is the incarnate God. He is the God incarnate. God needs to take the form of a man though he is a spirit so he could be with the man he loves and to be the Emmanuel the God with us and being the God with us he was able to demonstrate to man what are his expectations of man he did not only teach but also demonstrated the humility because though he is god he became so low and so humble to show us how to be poor in spirit and all the teachings that he taught those are the real expectations of God to us so that in the end of our life, we may be able to see God face to face and enter into that beatific vision. Because God as a spirit, he needed to become man 
to become a physical man so that man will be able to see with his own eyes and perceive him with, the, with their own senses what are the teachings of God and now that we are living in the time of the Holy Spirit after Jesus had ascended to heaven this is the time of the Holy Spirit and God manifests in the Holy Spirit. Now the question is, can we see the Holy Spirit? Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my say be saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So, it is with everyone born of the Spirit. John 3 verses 6 to 8. I have mentioned about the spiritual eyes and the physical eyes. To see God in the perspective of Christians, we must have what we call the spiritual eyes. In Jeremiah 29 verse 13, God says, Seek me and you will find me, if you will seek me with all your heart. In Matthew 5 verse 8, Jesus says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And finally, to those who are redeemed, to those who are saved by the blood of Jesus, can finally enter heaven at the end of time. And there, Revelation chapter 22, verse 4, they will look upon his face and his name will be on their foreheads. Night will be no more, nor will they need light from lamp or sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. So thank you, brother and sister. Thank you for watching. I hope I have given my Christian Catholic perspective in this video and if you may please give me a big thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel and if you may please share and comment down below for any feedback that you may have so that I will be able to improve my reaction. Thank you and see you on my next reaction.